Alright folks, how are you all doing? Uh, thought I'd make another little video, thanks to those of you who are following along with these and having a bit of fun with them. Um, so today I thought I'd again try something uh, a little different, so a little bit of familiar, a little bit of different, mix it up, hopefully keep it interesting. Um, so today we're going to make a working TV, in quotation marks, um, and for that you're going to need one little short ideally video file so it could be something you've recorded off your phone um, or something you download off the internet something you just already have on your computer uh, ideally make it one that's you know a uh, landscape so like a, a kind of a widescreen tv roughly the the shape of a t tv screen um, so without further ado let's get into it uh, the modeling here today is going to be pretty simple okay uh, so let's keep the old default cube and we'll snap to a front view and oh let's get my screencast keys on I forgot to do that okay cool screencast keys and we'll just dismiss that panel with N so I'll select the cube again tab into edit mode and G Z we're just going to move it up a little bit above the green line there above the ground and we're going to scale it in Y S Y like that just to get the kind of roughly TV shape and let's have a look at the side of it. it's from obviously monstrously thick and this is not 2004 this is not a huge old CRT feed so we're going to scale XSX again just to make it nice and modern and slim there we go that looks pretty decent okay so that's our roughly our TV shape so now let's just uh, select face select mode so you can either hit the number three or click the button up there either or will do and let's click on that front face of the TV <coughs> oh, excuse me and we're going to hit I to insert and then just move it in, inset a little bit for the bevel of the telly not too much modern TVs tend to have pretty slim bezels but they all have this edge this beveled edge around so I for inset and then just move it in a little bit and then we're going to extrude it backwards on the along the X, the red X direction. So let's hit E for extrude and X for the direction X. And then let's just push it back in a little bit like that. Okay, cool. Already that's starting to look a bit like a telly. Now we're not really going to do much with the back of the TV, but let's just put a little kind of box in for the electronics back here. So let's select that back face again. And again, we'll inset it some amount like that, and then let's extrude it out in X E X like that. And then I, maybe I'll just scale S this just a tiny bit just to put an angle on it. Yeah, that's good enough, I'd say. And the final thing we need is some kind of a stand on the TV. Sorry, I came out of object, came out of edit mode. You don't have to do that. So go back into edit mode. So I'm going to select this bottom face of the TV here and I'm going to use shift S shift S and cursor to select it just to put the cursor right in the middle of that bottom face there and then while still in edit mode I'm going to add a new cylinder here and then I'm going to hit S scale and let's just make it much smaller there we go something like that so maybe just scale it up a little bit more like that okay it's a little bit tall because it's sticking up above the top for a screen so we'll just scale z s oops sorry s z and then just yeah so it's no longer pushing into our screen yours might not push into your screen depends on what size you chose mine did all right again we're still in face select mode so let's just select that bottom face there of the cube and we'll go back into a front view let's extrude it down a bit e z e z to extrude down along z we'll come down a bit and we'll just start to flare it out just a tiny bit so let's just hit s for scale we'll just bring it just a little bit just a little bit out almost imperceptibly at that stage we'll flare it more as we get towards the bottom and then let's e z again come down in z extrude in z and now let's scale that again let's bring that out a, a bit more Again, not too much and then E Z again all the way down to the green line 
and then scale and we're going to make this one quite wide this is the base plate of the TV stand okay that looks not too bad pretty much like a telly didn't take too much work okay cool so let's start doing some materials here on this so let's go over to the panel here and let's go down to materials well sorry before we do that let's go up here to our cube and I've come into object mode I didn't say that hit tab but that's okay it doesn't matter T if you do or don't so let's call that TV and let's go to our materials here we already have a material so let's double click on it again we'll just call it TV again and we're going to want it to be quite a black color oh sorry we can't see the shading yet let's switch the viewport to viewport shading here so we want it to be quite a dark color um, maybe not all the way to black or maybe it is you know it's your telly you kind of uh, you can make some creative decisions about what you like most modern TVs are pretty dark in shade and they are pretty smooth I'll turn that roughness down a bit it's got a nice shine they have a nice shine to them and I'm just going to bring the metallic up a little bit here as well it's going to kind of tend to deepen the black so now it's not actually metal but it has that sort of shininess of metal okay cool that looks pretty good so far so that's our sort of base of our telly I'd like to have a, a logo as well for the TV so this is something we haven't done before I think although I know one person in the room had had investigated this feature before so just for a minute we're going to just hide the TV by clicking on that eye icon up there just hide it and let's add a new text Boom, like that now you can see the text comes out it's rotated it's flat with the ground and it's kind of aligned along the x-axis so to edit the text to change it just again go into edit mode so you can tab into edit mode or you can select edit mode up here and then you can just edit it like text so I'm going to just hit delete and I'm going to put in the name of the brand so I'm going to just play a bit and I'm going to call it a, a pony instead of a Sony so we'll call it a, Sony, a pony so I'm going to hit tab to come back into, out of edit mode again and I'm going to go down to the panel here on the side you see this one for a text object it's got this A this text panel so I'm just going to change the alignment of this thing from left to center and from on vertical I'm going to have it again center so center and center so that just means it'll center the text around the reference point there in both directions so now we want to spin it this way so let's or Z 90 to rotate 90 degrees around Z and then let's rotate it 90 degrees again around Y as well or Y 90 cool now our text is aligned the way we want let's put the bring the TV back in let's maybe just switch on wireframe for a minute this will make it easier for us to see what's how to position this so let's scale S scale that text back so it's about the right size I'm going to go to a front view here and uh, scale again once and then I'm going to GZ just to move it up a bit okay that's not bad and to get a bit closer it's still a little bit big scale GZ okay I'm kind of happy with that position there obviously though it's kind of in the center of the TV right now but don't worry about that for a minute this text object is its own sort of thing and we would like to convert it to a regular a regular mesh so let's go over to object here and then go down to convert to and then it's mesh from and then these are the things that can turn into a mesh so text is what we have we want to turn a text into a mesh so let's hit that so you'll notice that over here that the A for the text properties is gone now this is just a regular mesh type object and we can work on it like any other object that we've normally worked on before it's locked though we can't change the text anymore so you only do this after you're kind of fixed with what you want so let's go into edit mode again or a tab I'm going to hit A to select all and this time I'm going to extrude along X along the red line so E X 
Let's just bring that out until it's just out beyond the front of the TV. I think I might have missed it. Let me go to shade mode again. I did. So G X to keep moving that out. There we go, just so it sticks out a little bit beyond the front. Nice. Okay, cool. Let's tab back into object mode and we're going to call that logo. And let's make it down here to the materials. Let's make a new material. We'll also call that material logo. And we're going to make it really metallic. It's going to be shiny, shiny, shiny. Maybe we'll reduce the roughness down a bit. It's going to have a high shine, like a little metal, little metal logo that we want. It doesn't matter that it's going all the way into the inside there of the TV. <laughs> it's only the bit that we can see that matters anyway, so that's fine. So it just comes right off the front. So now let's, with the logo selected, then let's shift and click on the TV so both are selected. And then let's go to object and join. So they're now just one object in the TV. Uh, but what you see is that that material that we made has come in as well. So if we go down to the materials tab here for the TV, it now has the original material and also the material for the logo. So it incorporated the two of them together, which is cool. All right, neat. Okay, so now we want one more material for the TV here, and that is a screen material. So that's plus here to make a new slot. I hit new, and let's call that material screen. Cool. Now, let's, we need to assign something to that screen material currently. There's nothing assigned to it. So let's tab back into edit mode, face select. Let's select the TV screen select the screen material here and hit assign so now that screen is assigned that screen part is assigned to this screen material okay nearly there already believe it or not so let's work on this screen material and make it instead load our little movie file so let's go down here to the base color and hit that little circle button at the end and select image texture here and then, using the open button, navigate to where you stored your image texture. So on me, it's in my Blender folder here. It's that one there, Jellyfish. Open image. Okay, cool. It's brought it in. There's a couple of things we need to change over here. Currently, our animation is set here to run up to 250 frames. So, it wants to know how many frames are in our video. And actually, I don't know offhand, and I could find out by opening it in a video editing package, but I'm just going to be confident that it has at least 250 frames, so I'm just going to put in 250 there. That's as long as it's enough. And the other thing I want to do here is I want to tell this um, texture to this to auto refresh. So every time when we're animating, it will move then from automatically from frame to frame through the video. So that's done. The only thing we have to do is fit this to the video properly. So let's flick over to our good old UV editing tab over here. And actually it's already got the jellyfish AVI file loaded up there. If it didn't though, you should see it on this drop down list. So let's here on this side let's make sure we've got the screen that face for the screen um selected which we do and let's just snap into a front view and then UV project from view and then over here on the um, over here on the UV editing panel let's just go into vertex select mode there's a few ways to do this but I think this is easier let's just box select those two on the left hand side and then G and X to move only an X and let's drag it out so it hits the side of the video there cool Similarly, let's select these two on this side, G, X, and move those out till they hit the side of the video there. Cool. Now let's select the top, the top two. You can do this G, X, you can do this with scale, oops, sorry, G, Y, G, Y, to move it up in Y. And select those two, G, Y, and move them down to there. Cool. Now, as I say, you could grab the whole thing and you could scale it and move it and scale it and move it and scale it and move it. But I just find moving each edge one at a time is easier and more precise. 
Let's jump back to layout mode. So now look, our TV has got that video on it. So all we need to do now is to play it. So to play, either hit the space bar or click the play button down there. And what do you know? Our TV is working. We got a working playing TV. So hopefully that was a fun little tutorial. I hope you give it a try. Um, and uh, you know, you can have fun putting whatever stuff you want on your own personal 3D TV. One thing I didn't do, by the way, is I didn't make this a smooth shaded um, object. Let's just flick it on for a second and see what that would look like. And the reason for that is that while it makes the stand look really good, it does kind of make the TV look a bit weird. And so you would need to put in, if you do that, if you want to shade smooth, you're going to have to put in more edge loops around here to sharpen and define those edges. The stand is going to look great, but the, f the front of the TV in that is going to look a bit funny unless you, uh, unless you kind of sharpen it up a wee bit. So that's why I didn't use shade smooth. But you can if you're prepared to put in the extra work. Okay, that's it. Thanks, folks. Mind yourself um, and take care. And I hope I'll uh, do one of these again soon. Bye now.